ओके सो वेलकम एवरीवन सो हु हैज uh whoever has joined and whoever is watching now so uh, <clears throat> this is the live session of the uh, course high power multi level converters and uh, so you can ask questions and clear your doubts we are uh, uh, we are already engaged engaging ourselves in um answering your questions in the discussion forum but since this is a live session so it is encouraged and i would request you to post your doubts and whatever questions you have in your mind um, just write it in that chat window and uh, we will answer those questions so before <coughs> we uh, proceed we have already got some questions and uh, these questions i will now go through and uh, so <laughs> there are like three four questions so um, the first question is uh, from an email nish sharma so he is asking uh, in an mmc with uh, six cells per arm that is three in upper arm and three in lower arm employing phase shifted pwm is the phase shift between two carrier signals in upper arm equal to 60 degrees okay and this is correct whatever he has read, written is correct because in phase shift pwm the uh, angle between two carriers is 180 by n so there are three in upper arm and th so the the uh, upper arm is a separate controllable voltage source and the lower arm is a separate controllable voltage source so the upper arm can be treated as a separate uh, phase shifted pwm con switched converter the lower arm also can be treated like that so that's why uh, they are completely independent of each other so this is correct okay uh, so the next is uh, another question is uh, from ravi uh, so he has seen he has asked in the sixth week teaching slide slide number 25 uh, you have shown reference waveform for upper and lower arm of an mmc can you please explain how the references are derived for dc to ac mmc operation okay so if you go to so i i think this is the slide uh, he is asking so uh, so i uh, so let me okay no. uh so this is where you can see what we have already covered okay uh, so this is subhashish he is a phd uh, research scholar with us so uh, anyway so you can see here <coughs> um the reference so this waveform here is applicable uh, both form for uh both for ac to dc as well as dc to ac uh, operation okay this waveform here uh, right uh, so if you see here how does how do we understand this basically the idea is that you have this suppose it is working for a what he has asked is uh, how do you operate Is that how the reference is derived for DC to AC uh, MMC operation? So, okay. So he is asking how do we get the reference uh, waveforms? Okay, the reference waveforms is obtained 
from the controller okay we have not talked about controllers in this course because i wanted to keep the whole thing separate okay uh, I, I i wanted to focus more on the on the converter topologies and pwms but not going into details of the control system because the control system for the multi level converters is the same as a conventional bsi or vsc okay there is no difference the only difference is the switching action that takes place so in, when it comes to the switching action then the control system is slightly modified at the end so this waveform this reference waveform so if you ask me how did i obtain this waveform i will say that the suppose if it is a motor drive the motor drive if it is a vector control motor drive then you have a omega star and from that omega star then you go through a series of control blocks that is a speed reference and then you ultimately get a va star vb star vc star that is the a phase reference p phase reference and c phase reference this is where you get three sinusoidal waveforms right from that va star vb star vc star suppose you want to implement space vector pwm then you have that max min algorithm and you generate a new vrf vb ref vc ref okay uh, again similarly if you want to from that vrf vb ref vc ref if you want to run a multi level converter then what you do is so this that vrf vb ref vc ref is this sinusoidal waveform which is shown in the uh, in this slide here okay this this is the vrf vb ref and vc ref uh, i mean it's the only the vrf that i have shown vb ref and vc ref are not shown in this so the for a dc to ac converter suppose this mmc is driving a motor that va star vb star vc star vrf vb ref vc ref is what comes to the switching logic block okay the switching logic block then takes this vrf vb ref vc ref and then it will do this phase shift pwm or level shift pwm or if it does wants to do something else on that so it creates a switching logic and based on the switching logic then it will send it either to the to the dsp or through an, an, an additional xpg or something like that and then the gate pulses will be sent to the individual cells okay so therefore uh, this is how it works it is a very standard vector control or whatever control strategy you wish to uh, run it so there is no difference in the control system okay the controller does not see any difference it the, only the switching logic changes when you go with this uh, kind of a approach okay so there is also uh, one question yeah what okay let me go to the question but before that i want to finish off this email so there is someone ravi kallu so he is saying that we take third year student on which topics should i take to publish papers for mmc chg npc of ieee standard i want paper of such type so that extension from this experience and knowledge i can successfully apply to some some fellowship what are the industrial proposal examples you suggest me to apply for so something at which in india where can i get such information online or could i join you see um the first thing i will uh, suggest you that uh, when you are so it since you are in a btech ee third year it's very good that you are uh you are thinking of publishing papers but the first level i will say that you try to understand and try to get knowledge publishing paper is a secondary or a, or something which uh, it comes next okay it is most important that first you learn build up your knowledge have confidence on whatever you are saying then you go for publishing papers okay now <clears throat> uh so at your level of uh, you said that you are btech and third year student so i think at this point of time for the next one or two years um take uh, some uh, like you have taken this course so improve your basics 
and for example in the fourth year i can also say that in your fourth year you can uh, take up a project uh, which is related to some of these multi level converters so that you can get more insight okay now uh, so you can take up some industrial problems so there are many many industrial problems so if you see the application of voltage source converters for uh, industry application so voltage source converters are used everywhere so it is used in say integrating pv and wind energy sources it is also used in motor drives traction drives for example and many other applications so take up an example and go through the literature identify a problem and then try to attack that problem by applying the knowledge that you have gained for example through this course or some other courses which you have studied in your course so um, i will say that this is how you get more experience and more understanding of the operation of uh, um, this one. um also i will say if you want to join any company of course you should join a company definitely because as an engineer i think your knowledge is not complete unless you uh, work in a company uh, with a real life problem okay there you will uh, see many of these design constraints you will face it yourself many of the design constraints that a designer faces and only then your knowledge building is complete okay so we in our uh, course curriculum in for example iit delhi we uh, do a lot of laboratory sessions and all our students all the research students they develop their own uh, laboratory hardware okay because we would like to give them this flavor only then they understand that okay fine this is the constraint which we have to live with this is the real world it's not like doing some simulation and theory this is the real world so as engineers we have to build things and we have to make things so these are the constraints under which we operate so many times uh, this uh, practical uh, practical constraints and practical design ideas are very helpful so then they realize that okay whatever i but at the same time you will see that the practical follows very close to the theory so unless you know the theory very well you will not be able to do the practical exercise uh, or building a converter but uh, of course many times when you build a converter you have to apply your mind i mean very simple mind like how will i uh, how will be the enclosure look like how, how should it be uh, how, how will i package the whole thing these are very practical question so where should so if you are building a converter in which on which side should be the input which side should be the output how it can be user friendly because when you build once it should be also easily kind of like if you want to service it it should be easily serviceable it should be easily integratable like that so those things also are very important so but you will get a lot of understanding about this when you go to a core company where you are involved in the design fabrication of such converters so i would suggest that uh, going to the industry is definitely a very good option but you can also uh, go for some fellowships for your higher studies that is also a good idea now <clears throat> there is one more question in capacitor voltage balancing using lspwm after sorting the cell voltages do we have to keep jumbling the carrier signals applied to the cells according to the sorting algorithm results no you don't have to jumble you don't have to jumble the carrier there is only one carrier what you are jumbling is based on the sorting algorithm results that you get basically you are getting a series of pulse patterns now because the level shift pwm it will give you suppose you have cell 1 2 3 4 it and your sine wave is going like this so then you know that okay these are the pulse patterns for each cell now what the sorting algorithm does is that it will distribute this uh, it will distribute this pattern to different cells based on the current state of the voltage on that cell so you have one cell so you have a pattern for one cell you have a pattern for another cell so you will just distribute 
okay so which cell will get what pattern will depend on the instantaneous uh, voltages on that and the direction of the current okay so that is what we have explained in the ppt in the or in the uh, in the lecture so the carriers don't change there is in fact a single carrier okay in level shift pwm we have said that in level shift pwm we can bring all the uh, modulating waveforms inside one carrier that's what we do we bring everything inside one carrier so this is a single carrier there is no, no multiple carriers are even need, needed but this pattern of for the cells the pwm pattern for the cells that we shuffle that is what we shuffle go on shuffling so we see okay this capacitor is less charged so let's put this pattern to this capacitor this cap the other capacitor is uh, discharging so let's put this pattern here so this is what we do here okay fine <coughs> now there is there are some questions which are coming in the chat window okay first what is the question so is vpwm has an equal share of zero voltage vector but third harmonic does not have why is it so okay so uh, why is it so fine uh, so if you see here svpwm of course uh, so what you have done with uh, svpwm is that in the modulating waveform in the modulating waveform you have deliberately by putting this max and min algorithm in the modulating waveform you have deliberately made sure that your upper and the lower distance from the carrier that those two distances are equal you have made it deliberate that is what you have done in a space vector program because those two are controlling the zero vectors if you see the carrier like going like this and then you have the modulating waveforms now the distance of the maximum modulating waveform and the distance of the minimum modulating waveform from the upper and lower boundaries of the carrier these two distances in space vector pwm are always equal you have made it deliberately so therefore you are you have made sure that it has an equal zero vector duration upper one and lower one however so that part is taken care in space vector pwm but in case of a third harmonic addition there is nothing like this we have we have just simply added the third harmony so you have not made sure that the upper and lower parts are equal so that is the difference okay now why is vpwm has a better harmonic profile yeah so then you you have to do this you i will suggest you see the book by uh, pwm book by um, i think uh, holds and lipo that book uh, dg homes homes and lipo there is one big book on pulse width modulation also it's a big book uh, so that book if you go through that book it you can do this analysis i have not done in the course but uh, you can do the analysis and there by using the bessel function approximations you will be able to understand that okay the by putting these zero vectors equally you get the best harmonic performance okay fundamental the magnitude of the fundamental does not change but the best harmonic performance you will get when you put the two zero vectors equal only this will be visible only at the switching frequency band okay not at the fundamental fundamental does not change fundamental remains the same but at the switching frequency harmonics band you will see there is a change of pattern of the uh, of the harmonics little bit change of pattern when you make a zero vectors equal or you, when you make the zero vectors unequal okay so this uh, why we have not covered because see we we are not very <coughs> we are not very much into that analysis like what is the exact harmonic pattern of the uh, or what is the exact uh, magnitude of the switching frequency harmonic we have never talked about it this this is simply because of the reason if we put filters we eliminate all the harmonics okay so we are not concerned about the exact magnitude of the harmonic we are only concerned about the position of the harmonics in particular with multi level converters we are just 
thinking uh, like where is the position of the first band of harmonics so exactly how the harmonics are this will not be useful for this course however <coughs> if you have a very low switching frequency application if your switching frequency is very low it is very close to fundamental then you have to be very very careful like what is the exact zero duration and so then this factor is important then this factor becomes important and there we have to talk about symmetries in the waveform okay so you you should have symmetry in the so you should have for example half wave symmetry you should have odd symmetry so whatever happens at theta should happen as f of theta plus pi so there the exact position of the pulses the what i should say the position of the pulses the duration of the pulses with all these uh, half wave symmetries those become very important we have not covered it in this course because in multi level converters the effective switching frequency is so high that we are not bothered about it but if you uh, work with a conventional voltage source converter at very low switching frequency for example if your fundamental frequency is 50 hertz and you are working at 300 hertz 350 hertz as your switching frequency then you have to be very precise uh, like where is the harmonic or what is the symmetry how we maintain all the symmetries and sometimes people go with a selective harmonic elimination so they put a notch in the waveform and they put alpha one whatever wherever you put the notch at alpha you put exactly the same notch at 180 plus alpha and like that so put a notch so start with a square wave put a notch and put another notch in this one and then you see that okay what are the three phase symmetries happening so whatever you do at alpha you should do exactly the same thing at 120 plus alpha for the b phase and the same thing for 240 plus alpha for the c phase so these waveform symmetries also play a very important role to maintain all the symmetries so that we have not covered because in, within the scope of this course uh, it will be it will be it is not possible to cover it like that so but if i get a chance i will cover it in some future course where how you control a converter with very low switching frequency application that is possible I mean, you can see some of the books and references okay now good morning sir i have a doubt in calculating the levels of mmc okay what is the doubt oh how uh, you have a doubt in calculating the levels of mmc so see it is very easy like <coughs> suppose you have an mmc with half bridge cells now uh, uh you from a half bridge from a single half bridge you can get two levels you can get zero or vb so you have one half bridge now you connect another half bridge second half bridge so from the second half bridge you can get again zero and v from the now you make an addition of these two so you can get zero vd and two v right so from two such half bridges you get three levels of voltage now you can connect another half bridge so if you connect another half bridge that third half bridge also will produce independently zero and vd so now you will get zero vd two vd and three vd right so therefore for a half bridge mmc if you have n number of cells you will get n plus one number of levels in the output voltage okay so this is how we calculate it okay the third question please explain a closed loop operation of mmc for an example full bridge topology based mmc for ac to dc con conversion so when ec to dc conversion is happening so you don't have to go to a closed loop operation of mmc to understand it you just see the closed loop operation of a voltage source converter okay which is sometimes called the front end converter okay the front end converter what it does the front end converter uh, is connected to the grid and it maintains a DC link voltage okay VDC so the VDC star the DC link voltage is the uh, is the uh, reference so how much DC link voltage we should try to maintain and in order to maintain so VDC star is the reference to this control system and 
the <clears throat> that in order to realize that VDC start, we will uh, take some active power from the grid, okay, from the front end converter. So this is an AC to uh, DC conversion. So they, we will take an active power and we will take the active power at unity power factor. So the VDC start, it we are it, there is a load connected to the uh, DC bus, then that DC bus will fall if we are not giving enough active power to the DC bus and the DC bus will rise if we are giving more amount of active power than what it's required. So therefore VDC start is our reference voltage for this whole control system which ultimately through a series of conversions and alpha beta to DQ and uh, conversion ultimately we will get a VA star, VB star and VC star which we will feed to the PWM logic to fire or to control the six IGBT switches. That's it. In case, so this is for a conventional voltage source converter, like acting as a front end rectifier. The same control logic, you will just take it and then we will put it into the MMC with an additional modification. What is the modification? That VA star, VB star, VC star, that now has to be. Uh, that has to be catered or that has to be modified for so many cells. So when then we use either level shift PWM or phase shift PWM and then we have additional sorting algorithm if suppose MMC is there additional sorting algorithm we will put and then we will control it. So the core of the control system is not changed only the switching logic changes for MMC operation. Okay. Okay. No, no, for the sorting algorithm, we need to know the direction of the arm current in MMC. Correct, that is right. For half bridge topology based MMC, where should I put my current sensor? So, you should put your current sensor at the ends of the arm. Okay, so either you put at the beginning of the arm or at the uh, end of the arm where you are connecting the inductor, arm inductor. Or you just sense the arm inductor current. That's it. So then you will know what is the direction of the current. Okay, through the arm. Okay, Hall effect based current sensor has a voltage stress in switch. Uh, not really, not much, not much. Hall effect based current sensor. So you can use a Hall effect based current sensor. It's not much. So I will. We have used Hall effect current sensor, and it works quite fine. Okay. Uh, sir, if we use full bridge cells in arms of MMC, then the carriers and phase shift required in phase shift and levels. What what is the question? If we use full bridge cells in arms of MMC, carriers and phase shift required in yes. Yeah, so you can see the formula of it because uh, full bridge cell in arm of so it does not change. You see, this is where <coughs> some students are making a mistake. Like uh, the full bridge and half bridge, uh, it does not change anything regarding the PWM uh, strategy. Okay, because the full bridge, when you use the full bridge or or a half bridge, basically each cell is a controllable voltage source okay whether it is a full bridge or whether it is a half bridge so each cell remains a controllable voltage source as it is so that controllable voltage source occupies a portion of the uh, of the um, level shift pwm the portion of the this thing now if okay i okay i will modify this statement so if it is a half bridge it is comparatively easier because you don't have to control two switches only in full bridge, so then I will ask you to refer to those slides where the cascaded edge bridge we have controlled the cascaded edge bridge all the four switches in the in the cell. So there was one slide where I have when we were talking I the when we are talking edge B, you will see that there is one slide where all the four switches how we control for a given modulating waveform all the four switches how we control is explained please go through that slide if you go through that slide then you will understand that okay given a modulating waveform how do we control all the four switches in a full bridge 
in a half bridge it is relatively simpler because then you have to control only one switch the other switch is complementary okay um, yeah so just go through it in case you find you cannot do this you ask me in the forum okay then i will again because i do not have that slide right away in front of me so i uh, otherwise i would have explained to you uh, how the four switches but it is i have explained it in the uh, when i was talking about the cascaded edge bridge uh, this one go through that slide okay It seems half bridge cells have DC content in voltage. Does the elimination of this DC content in full bridge benefits in the operation and how to utilize this DC content in full bridge? Um, the DC content in uh, half bridge and full bridge. Okay. Now you see here the DC content in the half bridge. Uh, operation so the DC content in the half bridge does not come in the line voltage so or the output of the voltage so the DC content in the half bridge full, remember full bridge can also have a DC content it is not that the full bridge cannot have a DC content full bridge uh, if you shift the modulating waveform a little bit full bridge can also produce a DC offset okay so half bridge by default there is a DC content okay now this DC content in the half bridge is uh, something which is uh, detrimental in terms of uh, during the fault condition in full bridge this uh, DC content may be present it may not be present now we utilize we can utilize this DC component of the full bridge during fault condition where we deliberately if there is a DC shift of the voltages we can deliberately use a full bridge to nullify the effect of the fault condition or so there has been some recent research on HVDC fault with MMC half bridge cells there where they have found there is a potential um, there is a shift of potential okay when there is a half bridge so then when there is a fault on the dc pole to pole fault and the half bridges are working so there is a shift of potential and full bridges can work very well there because full bridges can provide something like sort of a counter dc because full bridge can produce a dc as well as an ac uh, whereas half bridge can only produce an unidirectional dc no, so so the full bridge will produce a DC in the reverse polarity in such a way so as to uh, minimize the fault current. So in that more functionality as compared to a half bridge. Okay, that's why newer generation MMC based HVDCs are coming with full bridge. However, full bridge has a big disadvantage, and that disadvantage is what you do with a half bridge. The in with full bridge, Suppose when you are bypassing the cell in a half bridge, only one switch you will use. Okay, so there are just one switch you turn on or bypass the half bridge. But in full bridge, if you have to bypass the cell, you have to use two switches. So losses in the efficiency based converter is more, losses is more, efficiency is less in full bridge as compared to half bridge. So that's why. Uh, Half bridge has a better efficiency, but again, at the fault condition, full bridge offers you more functionalities. So, in that way, mm, benefits the operation of the converter. Okay, uh, then there is uh, what is this next question? Is it possible to implement any type of multi level converter in electric vehicle charging station? What is the cost to implement? We don't know. What is the cost? we don't know because it is very difficult to estimate cost cost depends so that is why i think we should be a little bit uh, uh, you should go to the industry my suggestion to you is that go to the industry and work there for some time then you will understand how costs are related 
so people from a technical background purely from technical background they estimate some cost but there are many many other costs which unless you go to the industry will not be able to uh, say what is the cost for example i from my experience i can say a substantial cost is uh, is incurred during testing of the converter so you will do go on repeating many many types of tests some tests it will fail the converter will fail some tests it will not perform as per the standards and something like that so then then it will come back to the designer once more okay you come back to the designer and they will say no no this is failing this is not as per so your temperature should be up to uh, 50 degree centigrade it is going up to 70 degree centigrade so something like that and then they will say they will come back to you as a designer and you have to make modification to the design and again it will go through an iteration so it goes like this it, it will go like this for several iterations and then only the final product is uh, is obtained so therefore estimating the cost from the bill of materials of or the cost of components is uh, not the correct justification okay uh, so uh, just by saying that okay the cost of the material this um, capacitor costs this much this igbt cost this much so if you add all these components and you make the cost okay let us put some profit margin and then it goes uh, this is the total cost of the converter we cannot say definitely we cannot say because there's a lot of iteration that goes through in making a good quality converter so when you say a good quality converter it must meet all the standards it must go through rigorous testing rigorous so there will be several versions of the converter first version second version third version and so uh, finalizing the cost and ultimately after all these things this is only the kind of like making cost and all and after all this there will be some business people who will understand the market and based on the market they will launch the product based on some cost which probably you will have little influence on so telling the cost of a converter is very difficult i will say it is next to impossible you can estimate from the but i can say multi level cost converters for this say uh, uh, say for example this mmc for an hvdc application these this can cost several crores maybe hundreds of crores okay we don't know i ca i cannot uh, comment on that okay it is possible to implement any multi level converter for ev charging yes definitely it is possible now when you say ev charging uh, <coughs> then you have to see what voltage level now see nowadays we are doing uh, ev charging at 230 single phase voltage level or 400 volt three phase but this is going to change okay as the people are saying that okay we want to charge evs faster and faster we want to charge the whole battery in 10 minutes or 5 minutes like what we do in the petrol station then what will happen you have to go for a higher voltage you have to go with the higher voltage because a 230 volt household socket has a certain limit a 400 volt system has a certain limit maximum current that you can draw the maximum power that you can draw so when you go with a higher voltage so then you will say that okay let us integrate directly to the medium voltage level say you integrate it at 11 kV or uh, you do it at some other voltage levels so medium voltage level then the uh, multi level converters start to appear like promising okay at 230 volt probably multi level converters is not so promising because we have devices which are already mosfets uh, or igbts are easily available at 600 volt and also igbts at 1200 volts these are easily available so then uh, when you say the multi level converters people will ask you why will you go for so many switches at such a low power low voltage rating because we have a very established voltage source converters there why will you go for a multi level converter when will you when you go with direct integration to the medium voltage level then okay fine then now we have to see what are the availability what are the possibilities of switches what are their voltage rating what are their current rating and how quickly we want to charge electric vehicles 
Now, do we want to charge only a single vehicle or do we want to control multiple vehicles at the same time? So, then the uh, possibilities open up for the multi level converters, and then you have to see what type of devices will you use 1200 volt, 1700 volt, or 600 volt. Okay, how many devices will you use? Uh, what are their voltage rating? What are their current ratings? Something like that. Then you can decide, fine, okay, this is a possible topology. We have to see what is the efficiency, what is the fault tolerant feature. Okay, that is also important. Like, suppose you are putting one converter and one switch breaks, and then you say that, okay, the converter is unusable, that people will not accept. Okay, so they want that, okay, if you are putting a multi level converter and if you have switches which is uh, kind of like destroying, uh, you should have some thing inside the converter which will uh, run the converter maybe at a reduced power okay so that is also something which you should but definitely for future electric vehicle uh, for future electric vehicle uh, uh, power converters multi level converter is a very promising solution at medium voltage level okay okay can i say for third harmonic injected sine pwm we need not to control the amplitude of third harmonic in closed loop operation. We need not to control the amplitude. I will say, I will uh, <coughs> modify your sentence and I will say that you make your third harmonic magnitude one sixth of the fundamental harmonic magnitude. This much I can say. We are not controlling, we are just blindly adding. Suppose you have a modulation index of m for the fundamental, you just add m by 6, okay, as the third harmonic, and then you add. And this third harmonic, what you are adding is only, the only purpose of it adding is to maximize the DC bus utilization, okay. So, this is the only purpose, there is no other purpose, okay. You are not improving the PWM or harmonic spectrum and something like that. You are just improving the DC bus utilization, which you get 15% more if you add the third harmonic. Okay, so you, when you say that control the amplitude of the third harmonic, you are not controlling the amplitude, you are just adding the 1 sixth of it. Okay, uh, okay, please explain once more in MMC what happens when DC side is short circuited. Or has a very small value. How back EMF come into existence to limit the current? Okay, so <coughs> so you have arms, right? So MMC, if you see, let me see if I can draw it. So you have. I am not drawing the arm inductor. Then we have this. And there is a DC short circuit. Okay. Now, I am not drawing the C phase. So this is A phase, B phase, and then there is a C phase. Okay. So suppose you have a short circuit, right? So what happens then is that how do you change the color? So then, okay, no, no, sorry. So, suppose you have a short circuit condition. So, what happens is the current will flow like this here and it will flow go back like this, right? This is one possible, uh, possible uh, direction of flow of the current. Now, uh, <coughs> If you have a half bridge, right? If you have a half bridge, 
then once you detect that there is a fault then you will shut off the igbts right once you shut off the igbts then what remains in the hub bridge so you have this and you have this and you have shut off the igbts so you have you have cut out this one and you have cut out this one so what remains is nothing but these diodes the diodes are still uncontrolled devices and they are in the circuit so therefore the diodes will conduct okay as you can see here the diodes will conduct so this controllable voltage source in presence of the uh, fault this will <coughs> The problem there is, uh, so th this will act as a diode, uncontrolled diode rectifier. And so, uh, basically there is no control over the voltage that you produce from the cells. Now, when you go to the full bridge operation, of course you can do the same thing here. You can shut up the uh, IGBTs and then it also becomes like an uncontrolled device. But, in a full bridge, what we do is we don't one possibility is that we don't shut off the IGBT. We let we we allow the IGBT to remain as it is. And then what we do is that now the full bridge, so suppose if you see the full bridge has bidirectional voltage capacity. So it can generate a positive voltage, it can zero or it can generate a negative voltage but the half bridge can generate only zero and positive voltage so the half bridge was basically uh, during the normal operation this was the voltage which was given and the half bridge was kind of uh, these arrows they, it was generating the arrows now when there is a fault with a full bridge operation the arrows can be immediately reversed okay so the voltage generated by the full bridge is kind of like a back emf you can make it operate like a back emf which is basically um, opposing this line voltage the line voltage is the one which is driving the fault current okay as i have just drawn the full bridge voltage it, it, it has the capacitor inside it so you can make a controllable voltage source okay and that controllable voltage source will work in such a way with the arrows reversed such a way that it will oppose the fault current so you can understand again, again from this diagram here if you see here here the half bridge this if it is made up of half bridge you can see that the arrows are only in one direction. Half bridges can produce only unidirectional arrows. But full bridge can produce bidirectional arrows. So therefore, in this circuit, even if E has reduced, E has started to reduce, the arrows have become bidirectional, so it can support. So this arrow, this bidirectional arrow is as if the back EMF. And that back EMF is opposing any rate of rise of current through the arm inductor okay this is the other extreme case you see where e has gone very very small so the arrows the red arrow is bidirectional it is upside here and downside here it is bidirectional here similarly the green arrows are upside here and downside here so the both the red and green arrows in a full bridge it is possible to have bidirectional arrows so that the converter if e is very small in spite of that at least for some time the converter will be able to control the fault current but this will not be possible in case of half bridge because half bridge can only generate one sided arrows so that is why i said that full bridge can act like a back emf in opposing the applied voltage so as to limit the fault current 
which is not possible with the half bridge topology. That's why full bridge has better performance during fault condition. And that is the reason why uh, people uh, say, uh, in spite of having full bridge as um, uh, like less efficient, but the fault feature is something which people explore. And they say that do not shut off the IGBTs during fault condition with full bridges. Don't shut off. Instead, use these IGBTs inside the full bridge so that you oppose the applied voltage and reduce the current magnitude. Okay, so yeah, so uh, you, you, what you do is you say that okay, you uh, with the, with a full bridge you say that okay, no, you don't shut down the IGBT, but you try to oppose the applied voltage through this because the full bridge is a fully controllable voltage source. It produces both bidirectional voltage, and you will be able to control the fault current. Okay, so is there any more question? So okay, fine. So therefore, <coughs> I uh, I think uh, you, you can see this. I mean, if you study the book apart from the lectures, you should study also some books on MMC or some literature papers. Okay, uh, unfortunately, since this is a slightly advanced. Uh, uh, since this is a slightly advanced course, so you may not get you may not get all the books easily. Okay. There are not many books on this. In fact, only in 2016 or 17, the first book on MMC came. After this, there were uh, there I have seen a few more books coming on MMC, and uh, I will say that uh, you have to see some of the literatures available in online library, and also. Try to get some more articles in MMC or CHB or something like that. But CHB cascaded bridge has been there for a long, long time, almost 30 years that they have been commercially produced. So that is not very new. But MMC is uh, comparatively even now it is like 13, 14 years it is now in existence. Okay. Okay. So in one more question. Okay. What is the difference between common mode voltage and differential mode voltage? Yes, it is uh, common mode voltage is something which is common to all phases. So suppose VA, VB, VC. Or let us take two lines, VA and VB. Okay. So suppose VA has a voltage of one plus x and VB has a voltage of two plus okay, one plus y. Let us say. So then, what is the common mode voltage? One, one which is common to all both of them. That is one. And the differential voltage is x minus y. So 1 plus x minus 1 plus y, that is x minus y. Okay. So uh, so differential means difference of two voltages. Common voltage means common to both the phases. Okay, so that is the main difference uh, between common mode and differential mode, which people use very uh, very frequently in analog circuits, op amps, uh, common mode and differential mode. Okay, so common mode rejection ratio, CMR is very much used in op amps and differential differential amplifiers are used to collect or to only uh, amplify the difference of two voltages and reject the common mode. Okay, so that is the difference. So here in also this uh, case, uh, if you have uh, if you have a voltage source or so half bridge is producing one DC plus some AC. And another half bridge or another series of half bridges or another half bridge arms, they are producing another DC plus AC. But in the line, you can say that the two DCs are getting cancelled and only the differential mode comes into the. So, uh, yeah, in 1 plus x and 1 plus y, you get x minus y. Okay. So what is the point? in statcom application? If there is no circulating current, then the how the capacitor voltages are balanced. Uh, in statcom with MMC or I don't know. Uh, is he talking about statcom with MMC or CHB? See in statcom with CHB, 
there is no circulating current. So you you cannot have a circulating current because CHV by its own structure has no circulating provision for the circulating current. Now in MMC, you uh, if it is an ideal stat form, let's take say that is an ideal stat form, then uh, there is no yeah, there is no active power which is to be given and so there is no need for any circulating current. You are correct in that. That there will be no circulating current in an ideal stat form. But in a real stat form, what will happen is that there are losses in the in the there are losses in the uh, cells. So when there are losses in the cells, the uh, some active power needs to be drawn. From the uh, from the grid to the MMC, and this active power, and then there will be. Uh, so you will see how will you distribute this active power between the, all the six arms, and so you will see that you will make a sorting and say that okay, which capacitor has the largest voltage, which capacitor has the lowest voltage, and accordingly you will divert the energy into that capacitor which has less energy, which has less voltage. And so that the sorting algorithm has to be played there, okay? Because you have some incoming energy which you want to distribute evenly to all the arms first, and then you want to distribute it evenly to all the cells, okay? So that no capacitors diverge from there. So that is what uh, is uh, this uh, statum. So the Statcom application, there will be also a circulating current once, once you start to assume that the converters have losses, there will be a circulating current. Please mention the particular application of single phase ML and multi level inverter operating at medium and high power application. I have seen very few single phase multi-level inverters, um, I have seen very few, okay, to be frank. Uh, uh, usually it is three phase because in three phase, with three wires you can carry three times the power, but in single phase with two wires you can carry one times the power, one time the power. So it is not a, it is, I have hard design except for traction applications, there you can use multi-level converters. So Single phase multi level converters operating, uh, I can give you only the application of traction converters where single phase catenary is there 25 kV. You, uh, you, you take it 25 kV 50 hertz. That is the only, I think, I, that's the only application which I have seen. Otherwise, all are generally three phase. Okay. Okay. Next questions. Sir, during operation of C555 healthy condition. It is mentioned in the slide that converter neutral and load neutral are at same potential. Uh, but there is always an instant in both cases, converter neutral and load neutral. No, I, I, I so during operation of say five five five. Oh, okay, it's five five five. Okay, so so uh, all. So what uh, we will uh, say here, there is always an instantaneous potential difference in converter. Okay, you are correct. So when I said that uh, with 555, the converter neutral and the fundamental neutral uh, and the load neutral are at same potential, what I meant to say was that there is no fundamental voltage difference fundamental frequency voltage difference between N and O. Whatever we had drawn, that triangle, from where we said that, okay, V and O, there is a potential difference, whatever we drew there, remember, that is a fundamental frequency phasor diagram. That is not an instantaneous quantity, it's a fundamental frequency. So that's why you could have drawn that phasor diagram there. So, uh, that N O potential, Definitely, there is an uh, always an instantaneous potential difference between N and O that is creating those notches and harmonics, whatever. So this one is uh, this when I say that in 555 there is no uh, at the same potential at the fundamental frequency. At fundamental frequency, if you draw the phasor diagram, then N and O will coincide with each other. 
Okay, that's what I meant actually. At fundamental frequency, there's a diagram, they will coincide with each other. But if you go to a 532 or some 544 operation, this in the phasor diagram, they will shift away from each other. That means at the fundamental uh, frequency, there will be VNO of fundamental frequency magnitude. That will come. That's what I um, tried to mention there. Okay. Instantaneous vol uh, voltages will always be there. Yes. Okay, I think uh, then yeah so if you have more questions you please ask on the forum and I repeatedly see those forums and I will ask uh, I will answer these questions so thank you for joining and uh, I think some of the doubts have been cleared and um, we uh, of course uh, being in a very artificial environment, we, this classroom teaching is uh, not possible because of these online courses which we enjoy. The classroom teaching is where you go on the question answer, question answer, which we enjoy more, much more. But anyway, I hope some of these doubts are clear and I hope you will learn something more from the course. Okay, thank you.